Sorry about it. We're still good. We're still 734. Okay. Well, anyway, thank you. This is good. Um, thank you for applying. And just remind me, so what? how long ago have you found out about our work? Um, so I've been following for probably over a year now, probably closer to okay. two. Um, TZM, I don't know if you've heard of them, Zeitgeist Movement. Yeah. There's, there's yeah, some yeah, individuals in there that are uh, that just post different solutions that are available, that are around, mm -hmm. that people are working on. And um, the OSE was really interesting to me, just making hardware, things that are um, more practical in nature. Like, I, I've been kind of going along the track of we need boots on ground. We need to get something going and, and you can have all the ideas and all the ambition mm -hmm. and all the idealism but until it's put into some physicality or something tangible yeah. you know it doesn't it doesn't help so much you know yeah exactly exactly so we're, we're definitely the boots on the ground like <laughs> yeah, <so>. <laughs> literally <laughs> like <laughs> like, the, like T tzm yeah the, you know great but uh what's your program you know like right the uh, and there's some smart uh, intelligent guys there it's just yeah you know there's got to be the work component to it as well yeah yeah so so anyway so regarding the work component so diving right in here um first maybe let me ask you so did you have a period of time where you kind of got radicalized and just started looking at okay what's the state of the world or has it been gradual for you or is this like you said since a year ago you found out about this were you on this kind of path for a long time or is this new to you i think even when I was younger, I've always mm -hmm. kind of questioned why things were the way they were. When I was going to yeah. school, obviously you know how the education system is. You just, you, you memorize facts, you rinse, you repeat, yeah. and you know enough to graduate, but then you don't use anything or you, you know, you're overemployed, underemployed, whatever. Yeah. So when I became an adult, it just became more clear to me that there, this is wrong. This is not the way we should be doing things, but, you know, people just have to do what they have to do they can only work from their own particular viewpoint and level with of, of understanding and even if they do understand they're like me they get up and go to work and mm. you know you just, so you're you're you've been at this for since you graduated what like five years how, how many years you've been in the um so i'm 30 30 now uh so i've been in the computer science the it technology industry for about 10 years now 10 years now yeah um so the company so you start a company do you work for yourself or do you do you are you employed by someone so i i did start an llc um mm -hmm. i i wrote a few things out about what the llc was supposed to be i just went ahead and you know did the documentation and got the got it official but mm -hmm. i wanted to i did want to make change i wanted to figure out how i could help i wanted to work with nonprofits in the web development and i saw know, that the, yeah yeah that type of space that so language Mm -hmm. You know, I, I haven't, I haven't really been able to do that. I I've tried to, and then I have to go to work. So there's not really much time between me working and then trying to meet with people during the same business hours. So that's the first thing. Um, yeah. You know, right now I'm, I'm on 1099 contract, so I'm essentially paying myself and paying for my own insurance through my LLC, and that's that's yeah. how that works now. Yeah, actually, the way we're looking at it is when we train people, it's we we actually favor that people set up their own enterprises and we collaborate as as a movement. That's I feel that that's the most entrepreneurial route that allows um, most growth of the movement as a whole as a distributed organization. So instead of trying to centralize as a, as an org, so it's there is definitely innovation on the organizational front. How do we actually uh, get this movement spread worldwide? Right, but interesting um but let me ask you this so so are you uh, from from the immersion uh apprenticeship are you actually looking to to switch into that full time Does, is that your your goal that's that's something i've been strongly considering um as i mentioned before i've i've since the pandemic i've been able to save i've been able to you know be wise with my mm -hmm. money and invest so i can survive for a while on what i have but mm -hmm. You know, it's 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 scary. I recently changed jobs as well, so even leaving that job to go to something that was similar that I mm. knew I could probably get is is kind of daunting. You know, you're leaving your lifeline, but that's that's something I've been thinking about like ever since I sent my submission in. So that's something mm -hmm. I 
now I need to just decide soon and, you know, prepare. Uh, I live with my dad right now, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So during the, the apprenticeship, would you be working? Can you do that full time or do you have to continue working on your, your, your current work as so well? I, I checked the schedule and your, your schedule is eight to five and central time, I, I assume. I work from mm -hmm. seven to three East Coast time. So that probably won't work. You know, I, I would just have to save as much money as I could and try to arrange something or figure out another solution with, um, with OSE. But OSE is something that I want to participate in, you know, and, and, and really any level. The reason why I wanted to become a builder was because I, I have been looking at land and I, mm -hmm. I do want to take part in building it myself, you know, instead of buying something that's already built and I'm subject to the mm -hmm. regulations and codes. I see that there's a lot of push for building eco villages and starting other alternative communities or intentional communities. Mm -hmm. So that yeah. was, that was something that I would like to see, would have liked to see myself participate in, in the future. But, um, you know, right now it's really about me trying to get one foot, the other foot out of the working world. You know, I have one foot in now cause I go to work every day and one foot out trying to research opportunities, trying to move in the direction of, uh, out of the economic cycle, rat race. So. Right. So if you were to say you were to commit the six months to full time learning, there's also the enterprise track in the evenings, though. So like after hours, night school is uh, 530 to eight every night during the summer of extreme design build. Those three months will be like five days a week or so. Initially, during the, the apprenticeship, the two months before, be more like a couple two or three times in the evenings too i mean it really if you want to succeed at it i mean the thing i would definitely s suggest is okay you really got to throw yourself into it because um there's a lot of learning the cu learning curve is there right if you i mean you basically get the benefit i've been doing this for a decade here and now you can get the absolute lowdown of all the learnings in a super short time uh, but to get the most out of it you'd have to Put in the most time you can during the short time that you're here in the six months. I think that's absolutely realistic that you learn to be a builder. Uh, if you want to, if, if we go about doing the, the CD Go Home Enterprise as a realistic option that can bootstrap fund this, that's an absolute reality. Um, so that's that's an option. But um, can, would you be able to <clears throat> make it work that, yeah, I mean, you, when, you, when you're here, you're pretty much immersed in it. So. Otherwise, it's like, I mean, <laughs> like changing the world, I always say it's, it's, it's not a part-time job, you know? <laughs> right, exactly. And, and I, I was looking around at that yesterday, so I saw the Summer of yeah. Extreme Design build. So that's, that's a shorter path. There's the remote option. I don't feel like either of those options are necessarily for me. If I'm going to really do it all, I'll just go the whole, do the whole training. And once I'm there... I think I'll be fine. I mean, I, there will be other challenges and other learning curves for me to overcome. But um, really, right now, I think the main thing is parting ways with this this lifestyle. And you know, I, I like I said, I just started working there a few months ago and saying, well, mm -hmm. I'm either you uh, do something later for me, you you have me um have me come back, or I just have to leave. You know. And is, is that something that's financially feasible, you know, right now? And I, I think that answer is yes. It's... Are you saying... It's tough. <laughs> it's, it's just a tough decision, you know. Yeah. So you're saying, you're thinking that one option is you, you, take, you come in to the program and then you, you kind of see what it, what it is and then you might, you might say, wow, this is like not for me or... How are you thinking about this? What what are you saying exactly? No, it's 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 serving two masters at once. So I can't mm -hmm. remain committed to this and then try to commit to open source ecology. You know, I, it's it's right now at least for the apprenticeship, it's one or the other. And the way I see it, I, I've been in the industry for long enough. I can find work. I get um, emails and things all the time. So. Um, 
it's really just something I need to let go of. I don't think that the problem will actually be the on-site and the learning process. I think it's just me finalizing my decision to come out there and doing logistics of being mm-hmm. out there. So I also don't own a car. I, uh, I don't drive, so. Mm-hmm. Where do you live actually right now? You're in, you're in the south? Uh, Henderson, Green Valley, in Nevada. Okay, okay, in Nevada. All right, uh, so what are some of the questions? Do you have questions about? Uh, I did. Let me pull up my notes. Hmm. Give me one second. <laughs> yeah. So that was the main thing. I think it was more around the um, the economic financial side of things, but that's just something I'll have to work out. Um, what would you recommend about going further into the no car and off grid um, thing? So I know that you make trips to pick up people uh, once a week, and then there's a certain amount of space in uh, like on site, and then there's the primitive campsite. Yeah. So it would just be yeah. a situation where I just come and stay, and then get my groceries or get food on the weekends and. Yeah, actually, I mean that's all covered. That's so we're planning on getting a, a someone to cook for the both events so that we focus on the work and and that's all part of the admission, that's that's in there. So, so you don't necessarily have to have a car. We can pick you up, and I'm sure other people are going to have cars around too. And and we have the van to pick people up from the airport, whoever's flying in. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I just know, did- we make regular trips to town to get the supplies and all that. Okay. Yeah, I just didn't want that to become a barrier. I mean, if I'm there, then I'm I'm there, and that's that's how it is. So, um, what do you think are the biggest challenges for people that that come in that are, you know, that are like me that are just kind of on the fence that are um, just really becoming familiar now with OSC? I, no, I think it's it's really about the level of commitment. Like, if you want to go into the deep dive, and you you're effectively like pissed at the state of the world and you want to do something about it and you're like no this is unconscionable if you have that kind of attitude then then you'll you'll be great here i think otherwise it's it's like if you don't see the purpose the deep purpose of why this is going on and the potential of it if you cannot connect to it that's that i would say is the biggest block because if you don't have the why then you you're not going to do the what the what we're doing uh you really have to be uh I would say philosophically motivated to do that because it's going to be a different different work. I mean, uh, people call it that it's super hard, and you might say that. I think for me, uh, I guess um, you know, as as a leader of this and not giving up, like basically saying, "Hey, here's a new program for society," and you know, everyone says you're smoking shit and stuff. Like, that. <laughs> well, like you think, uh, you think who's going to do this right? <laughs> uh, and then it's like. Dude, this is obvious. This is not a, my destiny has been written out as far as what needs to be, what needs to happen for the world. If you think about it, so I'm a meditator. I meditate, so I pretty much kind of get my mind and and motivations clear. So that's that's kind of how I, I arrive at these things. Just basically saying, you know, I'm disconnecting from the the mainstream system and all the indoctrination there to see, okay, what is really important what's meaningful, where does society have to go? And from those kinds of questions, the, the current purpose for me arises. And I have that, and that's, um, you know, that's unstoppable, right? Uh, but a person who, who, who comes into this, I think the, just the motivation, like, why are you doing this? What's your purpose? Um, that, I would say, is the biggest block. Because, I mean, after all, we're, I mean, we're not doing anything different. You know, we eat food, we sit on a computer, we work on machines, we design things. You know, it's the same stuff that anyone else does. But uh, I think um, maybe the framework with which it's done, um, you have to be an independent thinker, I would say, to do that. And especially at the pioneering time, that may be a challenge for people but once you know once we have gigantic traction and economic business models that are just growing like crazy then oh it's obvious these guys are succeeding even in the economic system of today so right. i think at this time we're positioned to double um i think what's going to happen from now on is we're going to double every year um that's we're at like a hundred or two hundred thousand 
per year right now. I mean, we're like a shoe, shoestring budget operation. We, we make revenue <laughs> from the workshops. Um, but um, labor of love. Are, yeah, yeah. And it's like, it's not a problem. I mean, our budget to date has been just just for transparency on that. It's like about one, it's only like 1.5 million bucks over the last last decade or so um, from foundations. And then first we started on crowdfunding. Basically, I had like $30,000 in savings. I burnt it all pretty quick, <laughs> learning <laughs> stuff that I thought I knew. I <laughs> just burned it all away. Then I yeah. said, oh, let me do some crowdfunding here. Cool. Oh, it works. Awesome. Right. Um, <laughs> Other people see the... And then, and, and then started to uh, actually run the workshops and produce the machines. So. Um, you know, we did our first production run of machines a long time ago. I think it was like 2010 or so. Uh, made like 25,000 bucks from sales there. Then started doing training workshops. So the revenue model right now is uh, it has been machine sales and training workshops. That's basically what we do. We're in a business of education. When we produce things, we also organize education events around it. But okay. But as far as psycholo like psychologically speaking, just to finish off the thought on what the mental the mindset is so we know that software has dominated the industry and anyone who's who's smart they will collaborate on software even though they do the open core and then they privatize the the products that come from it so it's obvious oh we make the best products by collaborating now that's completely unheard of for hardware right and nobody thinks that that can be done. For me, it's it's inevitable that that will happen simply because it's a it's an efficient way to to design and build. Right. Um, so as the economy moves towards higher and higher efficiency, that's just an inevitable part that emerges. The fact that oh now people collaborate on hardware because you don't want to have like a thousand different cars if you can collaborate all to make one car that's the best. Right. Like for example. Uh, there's no such thing as the a good diesel engine. Like everyone has got some fault that you know you can point to. So the idea is very simple. It's like, duh, uh, why not collaborate and actually make the best thing? Right. Hello. <laughs> it's. I mean, the logic is obvious, but uh, and that's exactly what we're doing. We're saying, hey, uh, Joshua, come over. People come on over. We're going to develop products that dominate the marketplace. We we have a name for that. It's called sub distributed market substitution basically uh, you get people to collaborate and then right. that best product is distributed to micro factories worldwide just like software has run on top of computers and that's succeeded with software right. so that promise is the next very clearly the next trillion dollar economy it's bigger than google and amazon and all of that uh, now people don't know that yet but for us, that's that's what we're just saying. Hey, we're just going to do that. Uh, we're moving our way, just mind our own business, moving along that direction. And you're that's the kind of attitude you have to have. It's it's to say, OK, we're collaborating. And so the requirement for you is, OK, so we're going to be developing the release of the house, uh, the, the which seed. For CD Cajon, mm -hmm. which we're building for clients. We're upping our game on a compressed earth block press, which we sell, but we could make a robust business out of that. We can up our game on the three D printer business, which we sell, but we can, you know, we can have a real business that scales to many, many people worldwide. Uh, we can up our game on tractors, which uh, all the things I mentioned are multi billion dollar industries. Right. That, like that for time. Yeah. And it's all and it's all already there. Like people, people are going to have to at some point take back more responsibility and more control over the lives that they right. live in. You know, the the easy way is just going and reporting in and coming back and saying that you've that you can buy this or buy that. And being able to have this means you can step away from all of that and really work on innovating and really working work on making a change. And that's the other thing that this is the bigger picture is a liberator. This is a liberator of people, putting power back into people's hands. Like three D printing is huge, but people just need to be able to spend more time on being creative, you know, thing of versus out there. I don't there. know if you, yeah. I don't know if the word liberator is uh, accidentally, but that's what we call our brick press. It's called the liberator. <laughs> yeah. I think because I did see that. From the, well, because it liberates you from the biggest cost in your life, which is housing. Right. Hence, hence the name. But yeah, that's exactly right. Um, I think people talk about circular economies and 
um, kind of transitioning to the next economy. Uh, we know that there's social problems and now the huge political divisions that are based on resentment of further class divisions um, right. instead of everyone getting a fair shot. Uh, so I think we've got solutions that um, that are inevitable. And uh, the idea is that to get people like yourself around that mindset to actually find, hey, there's purpose in it and I'll do it. And, and there's not a question whether that, that will work uh, financially. Like um, I think with a Civica home, it's uh, who else is going to build you a hundred thousand dollar house? It's the, the model that okay, just to explain the model: fifty thousand materials, right. and we charge fifty thousand for the build fee. Then there's land and other costs like hookups, but you can, you're not going to get a, a house at that co price point anywhere. So we have right. an advantage of say like two x or at least fifty percent over anyone else. So uh, are we going to succeed? You tell me. We're gonna right. Exactly. Exactly. I, I actually saw that option and I considered it at first. Um, I saw I saw about the home and I was saying to myself like, well, I could just, I could just about go ahead and get this started right now. I just need to land a plot put on and and just have yeah. people come out and help. But then I want to be a part of the build too and part of the movement because what I'm doing it has no real purpose for me anyway. The purpose is to just collect <laughs> go in do my like and, and i take pride in my work I, don't get me wrong but right that's the that's the sole motivation is to make the money and keep on surviving and paying rent and you know nothing else yeah. really is interesting to me so that that's yeah. the that's the main thing for me as well is looking for some something to grow into right now i'm i'm just kind of here and you know yeah i mean just looking at you like looking at like your situation it's like i would immediately say give it a try see where we are in six months where um the thing to emphasize is there's a lot of development like for example for the cd home we'll, we're going to do a, a first in the world i i believe it's uh nobody has a full digital model of of a complex device like a house that means thousands upon thousands we're talking down to every screw and in the digital model, like here's your water heater, here's everything, absolutely <laughs> everything. Oh, wow. Now, you're not going to do that. Uh, no company is going to be crazy enough to do that. Right. We are because we're going to say we're doing a, a crowd collaborative event. We're, we're actually doing the, it's going to be August or September, um, but we're going to do this huge hackathon where we work on that. We, we do the full digital model, full BOM, full instructionals, and full... Uh, we're going to use icons to to show like a graphical language of how you represent every single part. It's very easy to use like pattern. I don't know if you've ever heard of pattern language or pattern languages, but uh, iconized pattern language where you can represent everything using icons. So between the complete exhaustive documentation, like we like we capture the entire build of every single module that's built in parallel, say in five days, uh, with all those assets, we're going to just swarm and. Uh, the goal right now is 6,000 people over three days. So we're going to have to do a major, major marketing push for that. Okay. But in that kind of time, you can talk about a serious publication, uh, which will be an enterprise guide for how you actually run an enterprise like that. So just to give you an example, if you take a look at there's the bill of materials, you, you can analyze the video for build time and, and workflows. You can come up with business models for that. And, and we're proposing a certain kind of build business model, which is the high value of the, the build time compression using the swarm builds pending, which can work pending the inspection schedules because you still have to conform to an inspection schedule that's for a given location. Right. If there's no codes, then you can just go five days straight because nobody's checking you. If you have codes, you're going to have to have the inspector come. OK, here's the here's the foundation. Here's the framing, whatever electrical. So you, you'll be interrupted by the schedule whenever the inspector can come out there. But um, um, yeah, that's the value. But the idea there is uh, what I'm emphasizing is the amount of development. Like the one thing I found out over the years is that it takes amazing amount of development to get something full and why nobody succeeds in hardware so far. Well, the 3D printers have, su have succeeded, but nobody noticed <laughs> and they right. more or less went proprietary largely. Um, like with MakerBot, I don't know if you ever heard of MakerBot. Yeah, I, I happen to Creality uh, Ender 3. And then there's the rep rep printer. I, I, I was just like, I can just print out more printers now and parts. And, you know, yeah. I just never really 
got familiar with the 3D printer. So yeah. now, you know, just sits in closet. Now I don't have any room right. to put and it that, anywhere. <laughs> like, so, so like, you know, said. the, the practicality practicalities being here like okay now oh yeah well you can actually take that same technology and you can start reprocessing waste plastic for actual building panels that we use in the house so but once again all these things are developing that take a lot of time and, and effort and that's why we're saying um, we're in order to do what we call the distributed market substitution uh, that's a lot of work and, and I, I think it will happen because only in a collaborative context, because no company, even the biggest companies are going to have enough budgets to go through that kind of uh, due diligence where a lot of it is about open documentation, which it's, it's not in their interest. They don't do that. Right. Uh, but that, they're not a distributed enterprise. They're, they're about concentrating capital further in, into people's certain be, people's hands. Be able to offer warranties, be able to be in control of the process and still kind of maintain some kind of ownership over the product even after you bought it yeah you know like with the tractors that the companies tractor companies own you you can't repair your own tractor things like that that's common news I don't, you've heard about that stuff i think yeah. i read i read something about like the proprietary parts as well like you can only buy this particular wheel for this particular tractor so it's not just it's not yeah. just modular you know yeah yeah, when you look in the, into the details of all of that, it's it's quite inefficient, and um, that's why we're saying, hey, we can produce uh, better, faster, stronger, cheaper, and break that uh, the iron triangle of quality, speed, and cost. And, and that's what we we do. That's that's our business. But anyway, um, as far as uh, whether, I mean, I would say for you, try it, give it a try, and then see where you're at. I mean, I think you have a safety net in, in that, given that you you appear to have. A skill set that's highly valuable. Uh, if you want to go back, back into the old life, this is not for you. Then you can. But <laughs> I think you want to give it a, give it a an honest shot as far as what's, what's the possibility. So. Um, but yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's up to you too. What other um, what other things would you recommend that I study? Like I know there's there's civil engineering. I've wanted to study electrical engineering as well. Um, I actually I dropped out of college as well, so I I'm in school now. I'm in University of the People, getting my computer science degree. So uh, that's oh, really? also also something. Just doing a class here and there while I'm working. So, so you, you educated yourself on the the programming part. Yeah, well, I've I've known how to program since I was uh, when I was young. So I did three years, and then I, I you know the the years of the partying and kind of not taking it seriously caught up so yeah be honest well, about it yeah i mean the thing that like i don't recommend the way school is right now because it's d disciplinary until unless you select some kind of a highly interdisciplinary program um if you go back to school to me it's almost like causing trouble because you you learn a discipline but without knowing how it connects to everything else you cannot be a responsible citizen in society. So that's why what we're doing is what we're doing here is that you get a flavor of, okay, here's, here's enterprise, here's builds, here's engineering, here's psychology, and here's uh, all the disciplines and you know, ecology and all of this that make for an integrated perspective on how something works. So the thing that, I mean, I got up to all the way up to a PhD, but I, I felt that um, totally got down this complete rabbit hole and, and unless one learns the the breadth of the disciplines it's it's troubling and you can't study a something but what what's gonna happen is okay so you're gonna study that but right. the way we treat it here is no 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 study like the breadth and once you know one discipline you're gonna see how oh yeah it's just in another discipline it's the same thing but with a different spin on it so you're going to be able to learn so much faster when you take on the interdisciplinary approach. It's like uh, we really believe in this uh, this creation of genius as a also collab like I mentioned collaborative creation of genius. I mean, we have to talk about the best information made accessible in the most rapid time. Unfortunately, when you go to school, you only get the second best because the best is proprietary. 
Right. So, I mean, I'm like uh, quite pessimistic about it because like if you go to school, that's part of a mechanism that, yes, it brings you up some, but it systematically depresses the peak performance of entire societies. Yeah, but the, then the, like, the thing is, is where does it bring, it only brings you up to me, it seems economically. And I, I wanted to go back to finish just because, I don't know, maybe it feels like it's something I'm supposed to do. Or maybe I feel like I'm working towards something instead of just grinding every day, you know. But that's how I felt about it. And I, I do like the interdisciplinary approach. So studying programming, you have to learn um, the back end and how everything ties together and how you how to deploy servers. You need to learn about security and networking. All of that I have under my belt to some degree. And then I have other interests as well. I mean, like electrical engineering, there's there's data science that, like you said, the herbalism, the allopathic way of treating people versus the holistic way of treating people and, and health and disease. You're, you're exactly right. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure what the best, like if you look at a, the, what's the best program at, out there for interdisciplinary information. The idea would be yeah. that you kind of create your own program that borrows from a lot of disciplines because um, each discipline kind of has its own bias, like, you know, in the world of science, like, for example, the stuff I was studying, it's like, we never talked about, oh, well, uh, uh, I kind of jumped out of the fusion world once. So I started doing presentations about fusion. Yeah, we're going to save the world. People brought out, uh, what about the radioactivity? And I started thinking <laughs> and stuff. Uh, oh, yeah. What, what about, about that? Yeah. That, um, thinking about that more i kind of concluded back okay that's you know we're not there um, until we have a responsible society we're not going to be responsible to do fusion right yet we got to right. learn to collaborate first uh so maybe save that for later and for now let's work with solar panels or so photovoltaics which can do more than we ever need so uh, things like that uh, so yeah it's always about trying to get a more integrated perspective which i don't think I mean, I don't know who does a really great job at this. I don't know. Like, so you've got the elite institutions, but they're all about proprietary and all of that. Like, they're not working for a better world. You know, I went to Prince and I was grossly disappointed at uh, kind of people I met. I mean, I, I got pretty depressed like the first two years until I kind of figured it out. But uh, just people are, uh, I didn't like it. My experience was pretty pretty bad because I, I was expecting all these dreamers and people who were talking about a better world and it wasn't about that uh, so you know, instead it was the breeding ground for the power structure of the world right exactly so um, got to do a little better than that so I can't give I can't like I should maybe think about it and say well, what is the best example of an interdisciplinary kind of program that actually tries to go at it um, in an authentic way no, I just the answer to one yet yeah, I just try to do the best I can by myself. I mean, there's no certificates or degrees or accolades, but I, I mean, I, I know what I know, and I'm able to help where I can. And that, mm -hmm. that and that's that's really it. You know, all of the other stuff is to get a job and to to work. Yeah, um, but the real question would be like, if you feel comfortable, like we know that there's uh, money to be made on items of big value and the question is are we willing to believe in that and make it work so it's, it's it really has to be an entrepreneurial attitude like we're we're going to teach you some skills the question right. is okay uh can you do something with that can, can you we use the something? skills but it's, <laughs> right but it's not about like can you it's like we are the the minds mind shift is we are actually all collaborating on that model like the other day i was thinking how do we like for example i outsourced a couple of things like admin things through Fiverr and stuff. But um, question is, okay, so sharing all all the inside of the business knowledge, like we publish everything, right? So, okay, so start publishing. Okay, here are good people you can work with. Here's this resource and that resource. So you absolutely open source all the insights, make the job better for everybody, you know? And that's that's how we operate. So, so the idea is if you believe that you know, can you do better by yourself or can you actually do better by resource sharing in a completely open environment? We invite everybody to that. And of course, like if you want to get the immersion training, you know, you have to spend the time and invest in that quite a bit. But, you know, our boundaries are very open because we think that that's the best way to go in terms of efficiency of development. And 
So we develop pro processes all around trying to involve the whole world in that kind of work. But I mean, if you're comfortable in that kind of environment and you actually believe the idea that, oh, okay, collaboratively, um, we're actually going to do it. Uh, I personally, I mean, I must share that last year I kind of had this revelation of I really shed the cross of Jesus, like you have to do it all yourself kind of deal. Uh, I have a mentor <laughs> and pointed that out that it's like, look, man, you, you got this big vision. Like uh, I was challenged on how how to collaborate truly openly. So at that point, I said, yeah, it's like, no, I don't have to do this myself. It's like uh, and uh, this program is a manifestation of that. It's like, no, we're, I'm not doing this myself. I'm going to do a little part of it, but it's the whole world that's going to make it better and, and, and contribute to that. So my mission is to create that environment where that does happen. And that's how we roll. So, so essentially, it's the mind shift of um, the collaborative mindset, which it's like, no, you don't have to worry about carrying the burden of the world. You know, you're right. just a part of it. And, you, and you, can, you can truly collaborate openly with others. So that's the kind of um, mind mindset that's missing in today's world and that's that's what we're cultivating with the things like the apprenticeship yep okay i i want to say that i do want to give it a go um i don't know if that, if you have to take that officially now or, or but i know the the program yeah. is starting in 50 days so it's it's a month and almost two almost two months away but yeah yeah taking so down. yeah 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 so um so basically like yeah i mean you 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 seem like a good guy that you definitely could uh i think you can learn the skill sets you're already successful in what you do right now you're definitely questioning like the, the idea is are you questioning things and do you want to just keep learning for your whole life like are you really about uh if there's a problem in an entrepreneurial way i up my skill set and i solve problems and that's how i roll in life so if you're you have that kind of attitude, this is definitely for you. If this is about lifelong learning and and challenging yourself to be the best and 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 basically trying to bring everybody up along to that level, right. that's how we're going to change the world. You got to uh, make knowledge and uh, know how readily accessible. So the, the core of what we do is. Uh, we develop our stuff, but we try to bring everybody along to that level uh, at the same time. Right, so. and and have the humility and and keep on enriching your own skill set as well. You know, just yeah, being the teacher, but also being still being a student. Yeah, so I, I look forward to learning quite a bit from everybody, and uh, it's um, what to say about the the learning opportunity. It's um, I think I can learn the fastest only in an open environment because I've been like actually my perspective on rapid learning comes from actually from my PhD program I was not able to talk openly about the work that I was doing and when I thought about that it's like right. man that is such a waste like wh I'm not learning the best I could because people are not telling me the, the their best details because everyone's keeping stuff to themselves in case somebody else takes it and gets a grant and writes a grant for that and stuff like that because we had some hot material that we were publishing and uh, mm -hmm. but yeah it's like when you think about it, it's all so inefficient and this this competitive waste is so so crazy and we just that's just the world we live in and then of course with collaboration you have to what we work on is to eliminate collaborative waste because if you don't know how to collaborate you're not going to get anywhere in collaboration either right like that's a rigorous skill set okay yeah yeah, so I, I would definitely say, yeah, you're welcome to uh, join the program. If you, uh, next step would be pay up. Your <laughs> right. <laughs> no, no, I got to talk about the, that's fine. Um, so I would just need to work out logistics and, and kind of see how July 1st, right? July 1st looks. July 1st is the date, so we'll be picking up people. What is What date is that? I thought it was like a Wednesday. Um, Let me... July 1st is Thursday. We pick you up Wednesday in the evening. Um, we prefer picking up everybody who's flying in in the evening. So, and we, on, on Thursday morning, you know, learn to design and build like a pro, starting day one. 
<laughs> just yeah, as soon as boots on as soon as you put your boots on the on the ground over here, it's on. Well, yeah, we're gonna start. The, basically, the the most of the program goes with we we get one hour of design lessons about designing and designing things, and then we actually practice. So whatever we're gonna be building, like tractors or aquaponic greenhouses or houses or infrastructure, we're gonna do a lot of time designing because it's all about you can only design as fast as the prior art that's available. So we publish, okay. we, we continue evolving, we'll work from existing files and we'll continue uh, improving them and uploading them. And then Fridays are more like infrastructure, infrastructure builds. Saturdays are all global collaboration days. So we're doing publishing like video, work on collaborative protocols uh, that involve the, the worldwide community, such as organizing the hackathon that we're gonna play out there's two two major things. One is the hackathon, and the second one is a HeroX incentive challenge. So we're looking up at posting a, a large design challenge prize. And that would be for the the large printer and uh, waste plastic recycling infrastructure, so that we can actually leverage the whole community to help us get that uh, materials printing 3D printer for the panels, like in this house. This, this house I live in, it's, it's a panelized house. This is actually the seat home one I'm in right now. Um, okay. But that's, we're going to, as we learn in the program, we're going to leverage the global community as much as we can. And that is through this major hackathon and the Hero X incentive challenge that we're going to um, deploy all around that time, um, August, September. So, yeah. Okay. So it's not just our, I mean, we're on the side, of, of course, we've got boots on the ground, but uh, we've learned how to do a lot of different things through remote collaboration and especially leveraging the, the large collaborative design processes over the internet and then on site leveraging the, the collaborative swarm builds. Okay. And then what, what, so what does it look like after graduation, post-graduation, you've, You've learned yeah. all the skills. You've been through a couple of the events, and you you've had the enterprise training at night, you know, to figure out some of the finer so points of. The way I'm I'm looking at this is, uh, and this is all up for grabs still. If you want to change that, but I'm thinking that December. So December, there's this, we finished December twenty, but the idea there would be at that time to actually to start actually to incorporate the organizations. We might do some final publishing projects but the idea is if you pick up the skill set um, collaborate as as partners so we'd like you to set up uh, set up your own enterprises such as LLCs or other things you're welcome to do things like work on site where we have all the infrastructure here so for example if you want to start producing tractors or 3d printers or work with us where we actually go out into the community and do the builds that's the idea so basically the infrastructure is here you would have access to it like through lease or other arrangements so it's, it's like an incubator um, and in the other cases it's like uh, we'll hire you or uh, but we prefer to work as partners uh, right. for the reason I, I, I believe that that's the I think it's got the most freedom to the person who's who's working with us and it has the most growth potential for the movement as a whole uh, so that we provide the services of training. We've got the branding and and quality control. Like if you want to work under our label, we can do that. Um, otherwise, people are w welcome to go off on their own. But the whole purpose of this is to learn, learn the collaborative mindset that you're saying, oh, yeah, it's actually better that we collaborate. And then we uh, the idea was 50% of the time we do work. Like if we got to build a house, okay, we're building a house, we got a client. That I mean, that's the that's the main thing. The CD Go Home is our main product release uh, right now. Right. So we build it. Uh, because we're super efficient at it, that provides enough revenue that we can, we can then use that to sustain the R&D efforts that we do. So it's all about, we're continuing the product development afterwards. Uh, but does that kind of um, does that explain it? Like the the kind of working relationship? It's really like we're expecting to have a lot of clients for the CD Cajon. The graduates right. of the program, we are going to be the builders. Depending what level you step into, you can learn. Okay, I'm just going to be a builder. I'm going to build, uh, right. or I'm going to learn enough 
to run build crews or learn enough to organize like a whole a whole build in other words you get a client we can forward clients to you that's going to be an option um, you actually lead the whole process not not us or you're not just a builder or a person who runs crews you can step up at uh, at different levels from builder to enterprise to organization does that make sense right so when you finish the when you graduate you you want to set up your own organization and you can kind of if you kind of think about what you want to do or how something can be done during the training you can come out with that idea and, and work on that otherwise you can further ose as a as a company and as a group or movement with your own business and your own uh, and your own work we definitely like to have people on site because the way we're looking at um, kind of the replication model is building a large number of the facilities the the whole campuses which have the education research and development the agriculture it's like a university campus yeah a mixture of a university campus an eco tech park uh, factory farm and all that it's it's an it's literally a working community I think the best example is just a simple university because the university has a lot of different things happening like you've got your cafeteria you've got food they, I mean they don't grow their food but um, they've got uh, definitely got R&D and teaching they don't have much for production but we do that's the the facility is it's a land-based facility so you want to make make compressed earth block we got tons of soil underneath our our site you know so you actually can can do the sustainable management of resources that uh, so it's 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 really like a like a global village idea is to replicate many of these worldwide right uh, so right. but first what you want to do is you want to get an a, amazing example of the first one so for right. the first cohort of people stay with us make this work develop the enterprise model um, that where all the independent partners it's like it's like a real life except there's a closer economic connection between the people it's basically take the village of you know 500 years ago <laughs> in the dark ages and <laughs> take that into the digital age like what right. would that village look like modern technology global collaboration um innovative uh, financial arrangements and structures of made possible by digital currencies and and the fact of digital production like digitizing the thing idea that now you have a digital model and that's almost as good as reality pending your ability to uh, actually produce the thing but the main missing thing is like right now uh, I don't know how people are aware of this but I think most people think that oh well why are you reinventing the wheel like a tractor it's like isn't that like open source already well no like you can get a lot of crap crap design um, but no like none of the best stuff is open source like the missing link right now is by far design Right. After all, like that's why you have the whole patent system and all that. That's it's all to keep that under wraps. So we're all collaborating on the design part. Once you have that, that's the, just the most amazing, powerful generative kernel that you can replicate one of these facilities. And we're thinking like if we've got a whole bunch of people here, think about this. Like we we taught so first cohort of twenty four. Well, we got now a hundred or even a thousand. Um, maybe at this facility. I mean, we're going to take over the economy of this town <laughs> pretty soon. Uh, you know. wow. but, I mean, but that's not yeah, I mean in, Miz in Missouri, right? Yeah, but I mean, it's it's like I'm not bragging anything or like trying to intimidate the locals here. It's it's just the idea we are going to have profound economic impact by providing jobs. I already ran into some really cool kids that we're starting to talk about. They're serious about. Okay, uh, they just discovered us. Some locals. And they're like, okay, we want to produce tractors. So that's how it's going to happen. People are going to get trained. People are going to start production of things locally. And if we have not fundamentally um, uplifted this economy here, then we're just talking. We're, you know, we're supposed to be able to do that. That's the kind of economic power we're after. Um, that we can change the economy uh, thoroughly, uplifting it into amazing productivity and thereby close the the whole social schisms and the divides that are happening right now right divide, so as well uh, so Just up, uplift everyone in general like you were saying that you know the community yeah. around 
so the idea is for what happens after you graduate well uh, I would like people who have the opportunity to learn the skills and get them well they'll be extremely valuable to us uh, collaborate with us uh, we have the facility here that we can keep evolving and making accessible to people who know how to use it and um, creative arrangements with that and for some people like if if I don't know if like the worst I would say the worst case scenario is we'll just hire you to build houses or to run crews that's kind of back back backup plan uh, talking about like the, the employee relationship which is I don't like it I, I don't like the idea of creating employees I want to create capable people who are independent financial independence not employees that's a bad mindset right yeah. uh, because I don't I just don't feel it provides a kind of freedom that a person deserves so um, I think about that a lot because I mean that kind of topic of the schools just churning out employees that's not a right thing to, for schools to be doing you're exactly right I mean that's that's exactly how I feel now I mean I, I just yeah I go in and I, I go out and you, like you, you probably can already tell from talking to me that, and from other people that 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 is the main problem it's like okay but I, I going here but what am I supposed to do afterward <laughs> like do I have a job like the point is you create your own job you create your own financial independence and your own wealth and really your own life and your success yeah but definitely collaborate don't go out on your own right. um, collaborate with us so that we can make the products that you're doing better and therefore that helps us so everybody wins and the thing that you have to notice there it's like that's not a like a finite thing it's like if we solve the problems of production we have the next issue of evolution to worry about don't worry about like oh the market's gonna be too small no we evolve we constantly grow right and then um, that's how we move forward uh, it's not a scarcity mindset it's like collaborate because then you can get farther and then you can talk about going to Mars or whatever things like that if you want to but um, hmm. about very ambitious things um, but until we learn to collaborate we can't talk about more ambitious things plenty of problems to worry about here right right with us now than somewhere else yeah. right <laughs> yeah it's really about uh, I mean the way we're pitching it's like work with us and then yes we, we make our living but we're working explicitly like there's a world problem problem in the world we work on solving it that's that's our job description I solve problem I solve global problems <laughs> we're gonna want to solve housing as a start right so for, for the first roll. thing the, easy, the the easiest thing and probably the most crucial thing you know, food yeah and, it's a big one it's it's the number one cost in anyone's life it's a big deal to solve that make it um, make that better for everybody yeah so anyway all right um i think that was i think that was everything i had so oh, yeah. oh um so what are the next plans for the campus or, or for for osc what what do you need most right now like what what are you working toward now specifically with osc uh, campus in general? people wise uh campus wise so people wise i i guess you're just you're trying to get people in and you're building yeah. your market base and then you'll have people that can come in and, and assist with the bills once you're ready and that's coming oh, up yeah, really well, soon yeah we're building another workshop and, and more infrastructure for living so we got a we've got the 4,000 square foot workshop right now we're gonna build another one um, before September so we've got pretty rapid build techniques we can use it's gonna be solar uh, but yeah infrastructure building so that we, we can house and accommodate more people yeah, right okay. now the house we have it's we can hold about 20 people total right now we're we're just growing that more infrastructure more uh, and more classrooms and get the internet completely get this whole place interneted and and uh, hooked up better for broadcasting with cameras uh, in different locations so that's part of that uh, okay so I've got our next oh you have another interview um, or that's sorry say say it again oh you um this someone someone yeah. else yeah 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 I've got another interview uh, for the OSE apprenticeship 
right okay as well. uh that's that's everything i don't want to run over the time or anything so um thanks yeah. for hearing me out thanks for taking the time to talk with me and um uh, i think i'll be seeing you soon i just have to get the logistics ready and uh we'll be ready to go excellent all right okay take care well good to talk to you take care